Now, I should begin by saying, as I alluded to before in our other lectures, sugars can be drawn in both their open chain and cyclic forms. In reality, they exist in both forms in equilibrium. Now, I admit that when I was new to carbohydrate chemistry, this kind of freaked me out. I remember seeing the open chain form of glucose, for example like this one drawn here in some places. And then in other places, I would see this closed chain uh, ring structure of glucose shown here. And I remember feeling, feeling very confused and thinking, these are not the same molecule. How can they both be glucose? I felt frustrated because I don't really feel like my teachers explained this to me very well. So now I'm going to explain it to you. In reality, the open chain form of glucose, shown here, does exist in solution in a small amount. But it's in equilibrium with the ring structure for, uh, shown here at the right. So how in the world are they the same molecule going back and forth in equilibrium? Well, here's how. What I want you to do is imagine that this green OH that's coming off of carbon 5 in glucose is the same green OH over here. So in other words, if I draw glucose instead of in this open chain form is looking a little bit more kind of like this semi-ring form. And then you imagine this green OH closing on this carbonyl uh, carbon and then the electrons being thrust up onto this oxygen and the resulting O minus stealing back this hydrogen from this OH. You can see that when it does that, it forms this ring structure shown here to the right. You can then imagine that ring structure going backwards to the open chain structure by just doing the reverse. This green oxygen steals this hydrogen off of the anomeric OH, and then the electrons thrust down to form a double bond, and this opens back up. We go backwards to the open chain form. So in reality, both of these molecules are, in, are glucose, and glucose in real life in equilibrium only exists in a small amount as the open chain form and spends most of its time in its ringed form. Now when a sugar is drawn in a nice six-membered ring structure, it's called a pyranose form. I'm going to talk in a few slides about something else called the furanose form. This drawing of glucose, you'll notice, shown here at the right, is a nice neat chair structure. You can also see that stereochemically, glucose has all of its substituents here in the equatorial positions. Because glucose happens to be the sugar that has the right stereochemical configuration at every one of these stereocenters to attain a nice universally equatorial chair conformation, glucose is the most stable and therefore the most abundant aldohexose on Earth. Now our text often depicts ring structures in a slightly different way from the traditional chair conformation. This other way of drawing ring structures, which is perfectly acceptable, is called a Hayworth projection. I want you to notice something about that. Our book has this drawing of glucose shown here, and we can imagine once again the hydroxyl group dangling off of carbon 5, coming here, thrusting its electrons into this carbonyl carbon, and having those electrons go up onto the oxygen, the O minus then tearing a proton off of that OH, to give me this ring structure. You'll notice this is not a chair structure. This is a slightly different uh, way of drawing a ring structure. This is called a Hayworth projection. It doesn't show us equatorial or axial. Instead, it shows us up and down. You can notice, once again, that all of the OHs that are pointing to the right over here in glucose along this main carbon spine are pointing down in the Hayworth projection. And the one OH that's pointing to the left in glucose is pointing up. Now here's the thing I want you guys to pay attention to. When this OH closes here on this carbonyl, to eventually form an OH dangling off of carbon 1, it actually can do so equally well in theory from two different directions. If it closes on this carbonyl carbon from the top, then that ends up pointing the OH that's formed here down. But I bet you guys can imagine the OH coming from underneath and it pointing the resulting OH up. So can you see that? You can imagine once again this OH here coming in to that carbonyl carbon from either side. If it comes in from the top, then the resulting OH dangling off of carbon 1 is pointing down. If it comes in from the bottom, then the resulting OH coming off of carbon 1 is pointing up.
So when I say that glucose exists in equilibrium between its ringed structure and its open chain form, what I actually should be saying is that it exists in equilibrium between its two different ring structures, these two, and its open chain form. The open chain form of glucose in equilibrium exists at about 0.02%. This form of glucose with the OH pointing down exists in about 36% in equilibrium. And this one with the OH pointing up exists at about 64% in equilibrium. These two different compounds, just so that you know, are called anomers of each other. You'll notice that stereochemically they have the exact same stereochemical configuration at every stereocenter except for this one carbon right here. You also might remember me talking earlier on our previous slide about the word epimers. Epimers are two diastereomers that have the exact same stereochemical configuration every stereocenter except one. Technically, anomers, like those shown here, are also epimers. However, we like to make up new terms for you guys to memorize for no reason. So we uh, use the word anomer to refer specifically to epimers of sugars that differ stereochemically at the anomeric carbon. So the anomeric carbon is carbon 1, this carbon that began as being the carbonyl carbon upon which the OH closed to form these two rings. So this anomeric carbon, if we have the opposite stereo configuration between two different structures, these two different structures are called anomers of each other. One other thing that I should tell you is that this entire process of going of interconverting between these two ringed forms and the straight chain form is called muta rotation. Some sugars like D fructose shown here have the ability to cyclize from their open chain forms to a six membered ring or to a five membered ring and then back. So as I mentioned before, the six-membered ring is called a pyranose form, and the five-membered ring is called a furanose form. So I'll explain how that works. You can imagine for D fructose, if this green OH closes here on the anomeric carbon, carbon two, fructose is a little different from glucose because it's a ketose. It's got a ketone in it instead of being an aldose where you've got an aldehyde on the end. This green OH closes on the carbonyl carbon, it forms a five-membered ring, this furanose ring. If instead this pink OH over here dangling off of carbon six, if this pink OH closes, that actually forms a six-membered ring, this pyranose ring. So in reality, how does D-fructose exist in solution? It actually exists going back and forth between both of these two ring structures, the pyranose form and the furanose form, with the open chain form existing transiently as an intermediate between the two.